Hokey dokey. In this problem, we will review the product rule. So they give us this function and they say this is an antiderivative of which of the following, which means we just take the derivative of this to see which one uh, of these matches the derivative of this. So starting with the plus five, if we take the derivative of plus five or any constant for that matter, it'll go to zero, so it won't play a role in our answer. So what we're mainly focused on is the derivative of x squared times cosine of 10x. We have two x terms being multiplied together, which means we need to use the product rule. We will call f the first piece x squared. We'll call g the second piece cosine of 10x. We will find their individual derivatives. So x squared goes to 2x. Cosine of 10x, let's start with cosine. Cosine has a derivative of negative sine of whatever's on the inside. So the inside parentheses stays the same. And then we multiply this by the derivative of the inside. The derivative of 10x is just 10. The derivative of any constant times x is just that constant. So we have all our pieces. Now it's just a matter of plugging them into this format for the product rule. So let's see if we can finesse it by just copying and pasting here. So not erasing. That's not what I wanted to do. Let's do this. All right. So we'll do this times this plus this times this, maybe throw some parentheses and a plus sign to make it, you know, a little bit better looking there. All right, so now we're just basically uh, picking the answer that matches what we have here. So we're looking for a 2x paired with a cosine of 10x. Do we see that? We see that here, we see that here, and we see that here, okay. We're looking for a 10 with an x squared and a negative sign of 10x. So we're looking for all these terms, uh, you know, bunched up together. The negative is probably a very telling piece. So for instance, D has a lot of those terms, but it doesn't have the negative. So it's not D. And then we have the negative sign of 10x. Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. Okay, good. So we have the negative sign of 10x. This uh, option A has the negative sign of 10x. x squared, A has x squared, but what A is missing is the 10. It does not have any 10 next to the x squared. So A cannot be our answer because C has all these things we just looked for. So negative 10 x squared sine of 10x breaking out the eraser shows us that it must be c all right let's do one more quotient rule example again the minus four the constant is always negligible because its derivative is zero so now let's jump into the quotient rule without even you know setting it up we'll just think about f as the numerator, g as the denominator. So jumping right into plugging in what we know, starting with f prime, f prime will be the derivative of the numerator. Derivative of cosine is negative sine of 5x. Then we multiply by the derivative of the inside, 5x, which is just 5. That's f prime. g is x. We put the minus, we put the original f, cosine of 5x, and then we put g prime. If g is x, the derivative of 1x is 1. The derivative of any constant times x is just that constant, so just 1 in this case. And so g squared would be an x squared on the bottom. So in this case, you know, we don't need this 1 here, and there's nothing that cancels out between the denominator and both of these terms. So I think we're really just looking for these terms both over... Actually, it would help to break it up, though. So let's start by breaking it up. 
and I may rearrange it just a little bit too. So I'll keep the negative. I'll throw the five in front of the sign of five X, and then I'll keep this X here for now over X squared. We'll have cosine of five X over X squared. So the only thing that does actually simplify is the X on top can cancel with one X from the bottom. So we're left with this. So we want a negative five sine of five X over X. Looks like a couple answers have that. So we can eliminate the ones that do not. And then we want a minus cosine of five X over X squared. Okay. Oh, okay, no, it took me a second to see what the difference was between those. Okay, so our sign has the 5 in front of it. Theirs does not. So it looks like B is our best answer. Hokey dokey. I hope this makes sense. If you have any questions, um, please let me know, but also it might just help to go back and review derivative rules, chain rule, product rule, in quotient rule maybe watch other videos on youtube that can go more in depth with those this is meant to be somewhat of a review though all right